Is there an elegant and easy solution to power the Octoprint Raspberry Pi computer from the 3D printer it serves? Depends on what you call easy, but I'll answer that with yes, along with how and why. The longer I have my Ender 3, the less it resembles the original um, form it was when I purchased it. Uh, some things is, you know, the enclosure that I have it in. It has a new uh, main board in here. Then power supply has been relocated to outside the enclosure. And then I have this OctoPi, uh, where this is on OctoPrint, the Raspberry Pi that runs OctoPrint. So I guess this is called OctoPi. I call it OctoPi because, well, I don't know what else to label it. But it runs off of its own power supply. And one of the problems with this is when I go to shut it down, when I'm not using it, I have to be able to turn the power off on this as well because you can't turn it on without cycling the power coming into it. So the, night, the solution that I am going to implement here is to have the Pi draw power from the power supply from the Ender 3. Now the problem there is it is a 24 volt power supply and this requires well, this will only take 5 volts. So I can't put 24 volts into a 5 volt thing and expect uh, it to run in perpetuity. So I've put together some things. You know, it's part of the OctoPi enclosure here that I, that I put together. It came with a box to convert the voltage from 14 down to 5. And that's what I'm going to do here. Here are the supplies you're going to need to power the Raspberry Pi off of the 24 volt power supply from the Ender 3, or if you have something similar, I'm sure it'll work about as well. First, a splitter, which makes sense. This is an XT60H splitter. To connect into this, we're going to need an XT60HF connector, then this right here is an LM2596 DC to DC buck converter. So this only trims the electricity, the voltage, I should say, downward. Gonna need some uh, some wire. I'm I have 16 gauge here. You can probably use 18 gauge just as well. I don't see why not. You're not pulling that much power. Solder. You're also going to need some sort of sacrificial cable here to go from that buck converter into the USB, micro USB of the Pi, or if you're using a Pi 4, it would be USB-C, but some sort of a cable that you can use to uh, snip off one end and uh, wire into the little converter. And some sort of shrink tubing or electrical tape. I like the shrink tubing because it, the outcome is pretty nice. So that's something you'll need as well. To actually assemble all these goodies, you're going to need a wire stripper of some kind. I have this uh, really nice uh, fancy one to stick the whatever size is in there. Give it a little squeeze and it's done. So works real well. You need a soldering iron, a heat gun like this or something similar. It's just to concentrate the heat to cause the shrink tubing to shrink. You can use a, a light or two. You don't have to do anything real fancy. A multimeter with preferably some sort of an alligator clip end on it. There's different ways you can go about doing that. And a small flathead screwdriver. Then you'll also need some alligator clip leads to go to your power supply somehow. This is what I have. Uh, it'd be better if they, these were shielded so they weren't just, you know, out and exposed like that. But I'll be careful, I promise. And finally, you're going to need a small flathead screwdriver to adjust the I think it's called a trim pot or trim potentiometer in here to adjust the voltage down to the desired output. So this only does voltage reduction, so it'll take a higher voltage and bring it down to a desired voltage. So now, we'll go ahead and get started assembling it. All right, well first I'm going to make sure this is adjusted correctly for the voltage that I need. That is kind of the important first step here. So that it's labeled in and out. So I'm putting it on the, the meter on the out. 
and the power supply on the in, which I think makes intuitive sense. But, so now, I'm going to see what the voltage is coming out of here. Now, they, I have a power supply here that is adjusted for 24 volts. And this says it's 5.1, so I can go ahead and can probably adjust that down just a just a whisker here. Oh, that's too much. Very small movements. We'll do 5.05. .05. That seems like a good voltage. I don't know why. It just does. All right. So now this is all set. Now I can get ready to solder the leads onto this. And and just for reference, turning it counterclockwise reduces the voltage just here so you can see that I'm not a liar I'm not making this up so counterclockwise reduce the voltage clockwise will increase the voltage so gotta finally get it to where you want it but that wasn't any of the manuals I had to figure that out on my own now as part of the octopi kit there's a little an optional case so this should have been on the uh, supply list as well for this to uh, this is a, so it's a little case you print off that you can put this inside of so that's what I'm going to do just kind of do like a little quick test fit here so this is the power coming in so I'm going to imagine this over here so then that lines up nicely there and the wires will come into this large hole and then the USB will come out of the small hole that seems to make good sense. All right, so I'm gonna take a small length of this. I don't know how much I really need, but I'd rather have just a little bit extra so I can move it where I want it, rather than make a an extension cable or something of that nature. Or modify it. That's why I like this. I'll go ahead and take care of this as well. Okay, I'm not really sure exactly how long I need to have it. So I, I think if I do about, oh, that long, that seems long enough. I did test this cable ahead of time, make sure it actually outputs the proper voltage. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, solder this together off camera because I don't even see how much I struggle to solder. Even with my toys, it's uh, still kind of embarrassing. All right, I have this soldered together now. USB lead coming out of the small hole. Although I might have to do a little uh, little schmoo on that. I guess I didn't, uh, didn't do that so well. Anyway, and then I have this side here, which is going to go to this connector. So I'm going to take the shrink tubing, I put it over the uh, over the wires, and then this little cap here, which I oh good doesn't matter which way I put it. Put that on here. I actually should do this the other way around, should I? All right, so I put the cap on first. Doesn't matter which way, which side. Then the shrink tubing. Then I will solder this here. Now if you look, it actually does specify right on here, which is the positive and negative. Here's the positive over here and the negative over here. The positive is on the, the squared off end, which does make sense here. So I'll go ahead and solder this carefully and uh, off camera because the camera's in my way. Okay, so here we have this soldered on. Now we're 
Might be a little bit long, actually, but that's all right. I don't mind it being a little bit long. I'm going to put the shrink tubing on here. This is why I think uh, a heat gun will probably serve you best. I'm going to turn down the heat on this a little bit. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and shrink this on here. All right, and then I can put, I'll wait, to, wait for this to cool down a little bit. And there we have it. Looks pretty nice. All right, so now before I do anything too crazy, I want to see that this actually is outputting the correct voltage. And I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work exactly. First time doing it. So that has come alive. I have this little doodad here. I plug this in here, and hopefully I see 5.05 volts. Now it's fluctuating a little bit. But that is, that's exactly what I want. Now, so in retrospect, I'm not going to desolder this thing because I just don't feel like it, but, well, actually, I do have an idea now. So I don't expect this thing to be under much stress ever. But, you know, there is that chance that I could do something silly. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a little zip tie on the inside of this. These wires are so tiny, I'm afraid I'm going to rip them. <laughs> Which is why I want to do this in the first place. So the purpose of this is just to keep this from getting yanked on. I'm going to grab it right onto the wire there. Alright, so no need for glue there. But I am going to put this little cap on here. Again, this is part of the Raspberry Pi, the Octo, the Octo Pi kit for the Ender 3. At least that works with the Ender 3. So I'm just going to put... Actually... Never mind, totally unnecessary. All right, well, never mind on the hot glue. Fits quite nice together. I'm gonna go ahead and shut down the the octopi and then put this in place and see how it goes. All right, so now I'm going to disconnect the the, the pie is underneath here, not in a very convenient location for uh, for filming. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the power supply from the pie. I'm going to take this little guy here, route him through. Now before I plug it in though, I'm going to turn this off. The switch, the, the power supply is now on the outside of this enclosure. So I'll go ahead and plug this into the Y here. Okay, now the moment of truth. Let's turn this on. The Raspberry Pi does have power, I can see the lights on. All right, well, good news. Looks like it's working. I can go ahead and do all the things. It does appear to be working as expected. Okay, well, based on this, I'm very glad for this change. I don't have the uh, additional power supply. Well, I guess the stuff remove it, it's over there. I don't have the additional power supply coming in here. I can get rid of the power strip down there. Actually, I'm not, because I still want the surge protection. And I think it's a, it's a cleaner setup. Also, I don't have to worry about burning through those USB power supplies as well, and that's that's also pretty important. Now, this is excellent. This thing's kind of old, so the uh, response time isn't great. This is fantastic. I am I'm extremely happy that this worked out. I can see the little power lights on in there. May have to do some other cleanup over here at some point in time, but 
I've got an idea. There are these clips that I printed off too. I wasn't sure what they're for. I wonder if they're for something like this. There, and I can pretend like it's dressed up. Look at that. Hot dog. Powering the Octoprint Raspberry Pi computer from the 3D printer truly makes for a much cleaner setup on this Ender 3. I wouldn't call this an absolutely necessary arrangement, but this makes for a much more elegant solution as compared to the separate power supply. This should, hopefully, solve my need for replacing the wall warts I use to power the Pi. I do want to make one small note, a little caveat about the voltage. My Pi wants slightly more voltage than where I had adjusted the butt converter. So your voltage may vary. You know, some people trick out their cars, pickup trucks, or even their computers with fancy RGB lights. As for me, it's the 3D printer that gets the trick out treatment. All my references are in the description below or at cubiclenate.com. Thanks for watching and until next time, see us. Oh, you know what? I forgot to specify one more thing here.